Praise the Lord. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. That one is just free word of advice. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10. And then we're going to read from verses 19 to 31. Please, if there's somebody in Haiti, please, I thank God beg you for this message to flow. Please go with me with true scriptures. All right. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. He says, by a new and living way. Look at that word. Consider that word. Which he consecrated for us. How? Through the veil that is his own flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. He said, let us do what? Draw near. Let us come closer. He said, with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. <laughs> I hope it's not, it's not heritage water. It's just pure water. All right. Okay, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, and not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exalting one another and so much more, the more as you see the day approaching. Verse 26, for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful, fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be taught what the who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Canted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and exalted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Finally, it is a fearful thing. Look at your neighbor and say, it is a fearful thing. To fall in the hands of the living God. That seems like today I'm going to speak to you on vengeance and a lot of wrath. Is that not so? Uh, with what we have read. Does that not look like it? <laughs> But tonight, I want to speak to you on foundations of intimacy with God. The foundations of intimacy with God. The foundations of intimacy with God. What I'm going to say to you, I want you to take it very closely. I want you to walk with it uh, because it will change your life. It will change your life. Uh, the foundations of intimacy with God. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. As simple folks, we've come tonight to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, and I write the word of life upon the spirit of man. After now, O oh God, make us all better people. Let us walk according to your counsel and according to your purpose. Let purpose be fulfilled. Let destiny be manifested. Let the reason for sending your word be established. Let us walk according to your plan, your design, and your counsel for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen can have your seat in God's presence. Ushers, don't worry. Take your notes yourself. It's fine. All right. Let's just sit back and let's just listen to God's word. And uh, please take a note. It's going to help you. Take a note. You're going to remember things a little bit. But when you take a note, you are going to remember most of what I'm going to say to you. And it's very key. I'm going to try as much as possible to preach from what I've seen, what I've experienced, what I've handled, even from the word of faith. All right. God's idea is that you and I be close to him. You see, closeness to God is not man's idea. Therefore, when you say somebody is close to you, when you are asked the question, how close is that guy to you? How close is that lady to you? You are going to answer whether he's close or he's not close, and you are going to answer based on you. Why? Because it takes you to determine how close somebody will be to you. You can choose not to pick someone's call. You can choose not to go to their houses. You can choose not to be with them. You can choose not to spend time with them. So you decide how close you will be with somebody. Especially when, it's, when we're talking about an elderly person or someone who is deeply respected. How close you are to the person is not a subject and a function of your attitude. It's the function of the other person's attitude. So we being close to God, knowing who God is truly, we being close to him is not our idea, it's God's idea. Except God decides to be close to us, we cannot get closer to him. We can't even get close to him. Except he chooses to. Our God is a consuming fire. 
Our God is so awesome, he created the heart in six days. I don't know whether it's literal or not, but he created the heart. The Bible says he's so awesomely great and big. He sat in the heavens, make the heart his full stool. Yoruba says that Egbe Yele Yengba Fo. As in, who, who are you and who is God? You are not in his league. You are not in his company. You are not in his club. Don't be like those errant, errant fools who say they have become gods. You are not a god. Are you listening to me? You and God are not in the same class. If God decides to be close to you, it's because he wants us to be close to him. I want you to understand that and establish that in your heart. Intimacy with God is paramount to God. It's not paramount to us. God wants us to be close to him. God wants us to be intimate with him. Intimacy is closeness between two persons. That's just the basic definition of intimacy. If you say, ah, we are intimate friends, it means we are close. Two of us are very close. We share. So intimacy speaks about sharing. It it speaks about closeness between two persons. And that's what intimacy is. Can I ask you today, are you as close to God as you ought to be? Are you as close to God as God wants you to be? Are you as close to God as you can be? Are you as close to God as God himself demands? Many times what we do is that we don't lay foundations. We are not engineers. Therefore, we don't understand how things work. Many times people just go around praying. And they are reading scriptures. All of those things are fantastic. But they are not the foundations for intimacy with God. Someone listening to me. Listen, if Mr. A prays, Mr. B prays, they have the same faith. And it happens for Mr. A, but it doesn't happen for Mr. B. The question is the function of what I'm going to say to you tonight. Scripture says to us uh, that God accepted the offering of um, Abel and refused the offering of Cain. The difference in both offerings is not blood. Because one was not a carer of the animals. God will not ask of him to go and bring a sacrifice of which he does not have anything to do with. The difference was a function of certain things I'm going to share with you tonight. Now, there are reasons people are close to God. And I've, I've been in church circles for a while. I was born and bred, raised in church. And I've been in ministry for a couple of years. And I've seen many people who are really close to God. And many people who, who want intimacy with God. Many people who lock the door of their room and pray. Pray so much. But many years after, they are no longer in the faith. Many years after, they have forgotten the way even to where their Bible is. I've seen people who, who, when we're in school on campus, when they speak, we started calling them emoji. Emoji. In fact, when they say, bless you, bless you. You know, some people have voices like, you know, they are called from the bat. They are called from their mother's womb. They are voices. It was magnificent folks. But later in life, we have discovered they are nowhere to be found anymore. When it comes, not to ministry, even to, to just being believers. What is missing? They were chasing after things that they were not supposed to chase after. I want to give you five reasons why people pursue God. Why do people want intimacy with God? Why do people want closeness to God? Number one, in order to use him. They are seeking God so that they can use him. John chapter 6 verse 26. John 6 26. You see, people are seeking God. Now I'm going to question your heart also. And I'm questioning your heart. Can I have John 6, 26? Look at that. Jesus answered them and said, this is why the multitudes looking, after, looking for him. He said, we have been looking for you. Where have you been? Where have you been? Like some people have saying they have been looking for God. He said, listen, most surely I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Two reasons people look for God. Number one, for signs. Jesus said it there. He said, not because you saw the signs. There are people who are pursuing God for signs and wonders. Hello, are you listening to me? When people wake up in the morning and go, I have nothing against online prayers. But I'm beginning to say to people that we need to question your hearts when it comes to online prayers. Are you listening to me? People are not looking to know God. They are looking for supernatural, just the miracles. They are looking for signs and wonders. But they can go all out. Again, let me repeat this. I hope I'm speaking to mature believers. I'm not against online prayers. Are you listening to me? There are folks I've told to go and join those prayers because they need it in their life. They are not praying. They need it in their life. But you see... People are just seekers of God, not seekers of the things of God. They were interested in the hand of God. Imagine as a parent, I come back to the house as a father, and sometimes I'm holding something. And then my children run out, daddy, daddy. And then they are grabbing the things in my hand. 
and then they grab it and then they walk away. How do you think I feel? I feel very bad. So the shop right, are you bought your chasing after? So okay, it's ice cream. Why? They have chosen it. Many people are children in the things of God. They are only seeking for God, pursuing God for the nylon he's holding, for the gift he can give. So people see God for the things he gives. Are you seeking God? You know, I know people who say, ah, <laughs> you are not coming for a night and, and you have a problem. No, that's not why you should come for a night. That's not why you should pray. Is someone listening to me? All right. Why do people seek after God? So that they can be anointed. Uh, they are looking for the anointing. They are looking for what is the anointing, the empowerment to do. Acts chapter 8 and verse 19. Can I have that on the screen? I want to give you, you see it there. Acts 8, 19. Hold Simon the sorcerer. He said, give me this power also. That whoever I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. He was interested not on the, in the Holy Spirit, uh, but in the power and in the resultant effect uh, of the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not the power. I hope you get it. It's not the Holy Spirit he's interested. It's the gift the Holy Spirit gives. Nothing irritates God like people seeking for the things he gives rather than him. People pray. I have seen people, we join hands and we are praying for revival. Oh, revive us, oh Lord. Revive us, oh Lord. Revive us is a lie. They are praying that when they lay hands on, the, on somebody, the person should fall down. That's what they are praying for. That's the depth. They want to walk in the supernatural. They are not saying that God should revive his people. There are two different things. Reviving these people is that life comes again to dead bones. That people who are not interested in the things of God become interested and they become passionate about God. But when people say God is reviving them, they are saying God is using them. How can falling down and revival be the same thing? We are seeking the power of God and not seeking the God himself. Is someone listening tonight? Is someone thinking, thank God I came tonight? Number three, why do people see God? In order to, bo- to boast about it. So they can glory in it. Matthew seven twenty two, So that they can boast. Jesus said, some will come. Psalm 22, he said, some will come. He said, we cast out demons in your name. We heal in your name. He said, I don't know you. Keep quiet. I don't know you. He said, ah, but no, we prophesy. Man of God, should I prophesy? Prophesy. I don't know you. I don't know you. You walk in the gift of the spirit, but I don't know you. We are not intimates. We are not close. You are not in communion with me. There is no koinonia. You just use me. I don't know you. He wasn't doubting that they prophesied. He wasn't doubting that they healed in his name. He was saying, no, I don't know you. Does God know you? Does he know you? Those are three reasons. Let me give you two reasons why you should. I'm giving you five reasons why people seek after God. Those three reasons are bad. I agree with you. I want to give you two other reasons. Because God himself demands and deserves it. It demands to be close to him. It's demanded in scriptures. Again and again, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, again and again you see it. Come, come. He wants us to be close to him. He demands it. Number five, because he's our source. We should be close to him because he's our source. Genesis 1, 26, 1, 28 tells us about the history and the beginning of man. Man should be close to his source. Man should be close to God. Now, let me move forward here. We're talking about intimacy with God. I believe I'm laying foundations here. All right. Foundations to intimacy with God. All right. Now, I want to tell you spiritual truth to note about intimacy with God. Scriptural truth to note about intimacy with God. Scriptural truth. I want to give you something. I want to help you piece it so that you can work with it. Whether you are going to be in ministry or whether you are going to be a head of a home or a CEO, a general manager, or you are going to be in the mission field, whatever it is God is calling you to or for, you have to understand how this principle works. Intimacy is a spiritual principle. And that principle is almost the most awesome of all principles. Because upon these principles, many other principles you are learning are built on it. Prayer is built on it. Are you listening to me? Faith is built on it. It's built on intimacy. 
In fact, your doctrine is built on intimacy with God. So you will hear certain things. You don't know whether it's wrong, but something in you is telling you this is wrong. What is that something in you? It's the Holy Ghost. If you don't have him, you will just say, I'm feeling uneasy. Look at you. You are putting a thing that is spiritual, you are putting flesh on it. Scriptural fruit to know about intimacy with God, number one. It is possible to be close to God. No, no, no. It is impossible to be close to God without a willingness from him. It is impossible to be close to God without a willingness from God. You have had people say when you move, when you discover there is space between you and God, it's not God that moves. You are the one. The good thing is that God is willing to share time with us. He wants us to be close to him. He is willing. Look at him and say he is willing. He is willing. I don't like the way you are preaching it. He will not slap you. All things being equal. Remember I said all things being equal. Aha. All things being equal. Look at him and say he is willing. Look at him and say he is willing. To share closeness with you. Imagine how willing he is for him to come and say, let me give a part of myself to be living on your inside. You, have, you, have you ever lived with someone before and then you discover you are now very close with them? You know them. Why? Because you live with them. In living with them, you may discover they are very bad people. But you shall. You discovered. You, that opened them up. God is saying, I want you to know me for me. And for you to really know me, I don't want you to find it in the pages of the Bible. I want to come inside of you. That's, that's to show his willingness. Scripture says you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Number two, there is no, now this may shake you, but there is no mysterious way or secret of knowing God. That's why I did not title this message the secret of intimacy with God. I didn't do that. There is no secret. There is no mystery. If someone is open and wants to know you, I want you to know him. Will there be a mystery to that? Speak to me. If I tell you where I stay, is there a mystery to where ShopRite is located? It's, it's, put it on Google, you'll find it. Even if you don't know Elon, you put it from Lagos, it will take you there. Why? Because it's open. With God, it's also very open. He is an open book. He wants you to know him. It is not a mystery. If it is a mystery, it's because we do not know because we have not followed to know. Scripture says you know not because you, you do not follow to know the Lord. When you follow to know the Lord, you will know him. He said because it's going forth, is like the morning. You don't walk in the morning and then you don't see where you are going. In the morning, it's light. In the path of God, is light. If you're finding any darkness, it's because of you, it's not because of him. In his path, is light. He wants you to know him. There's no mystery. Why? Because God wants to have time with us. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. If that's enough, give me an handkerchief. Romans 11, 33. He said, look at that. Now, I, 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 I gave you that scripture so that you can understand when people say, I know God. Ah, this is the way to follow him. Look at that. He said, all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past what? Speak to me. And his ways past what? Finding out. When someone speaks to you about the way of God, he's telling you what he has discovered and know. It doesn't mean that's the only way. Are you listening to me? Number three, don't seek for things. Seek for God. I found that in scriptures. Everything you are seeking from in God comes in the place of intimacy. Are there people here who are really seeking for things? You're really seeking for things. Raise your hand. I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I won't abuse you. There are things you are believing God for. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. All right. I'm telling you that those things will come in the place of intimacy. A direction will come. An instruction will come. In the place of intimacy. You will know what to do. In the place of koinonia. You will know what to do. Why? Because his secrets are in the secret place. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Most High? Because on that hill is the place where secrets becomes truth and revealed. 
until you stay with God, certain areas of your life will still become mysteries. And that's why I tell you that with him is light. He doesn't want you to dwell in mystery. But if you keep walking in mysteries, it's because you are not walking in light. It's because you are not walking in light. Number four, do whatever works for you. Tell your neighbor, do whatever works for you. In intimacy, do whatever works for you. Every one of us, every one of us are supposed to do certain things. We are all supposed to read the word of God. We are all supposed to pray. We are all supposed to worship. Are you listening to me? Those are normal things we are supposed to do. And it's fantastic for us to do that. But the glorious thing is that there are certain things that works for you more than other things. You have tried so many things, but you've discovered that in the place of worship, in the place of worship, you receive instruction. That works for you. Some persons have discovered that in the place of prayers, it seems like he and God is having a koinonia. That works for you. Are you listening to me? Somebody has discovered that when he opens the word of God and begins to read it, that works for him. I was reading a book, uh, um, in, is it Desire of God, Desiring God or something? I was talking about close there with God and the guy was saying, uh, he goes every day and just take a walk in the, in the forest, in the park, and then he just walks in that solitude. God speaks to him. I have a problem with him teaching it because I don't understand that. I, it doesn't mean it's work for me that way. I can go there and be distracted by the sound of the birds. I, I, I don't know whether you get what I'm trying to say. I can go there and be canting the trees. Ah, fly, I'm fine. Praise the Lord. My coach, I, 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 this is fantastic. man. That, that, oh. You see, it is what works for you that you should stay in. I am not saying that. You see, there are spiritual principles you must obey. You must obey prayers. You must obey reading the word of God. But when it comes to instructions, when it comes with de- digging deep, delving deep in, deeper into God, we know what works for us. Whatever works for you, stay there. Some people know that when they just start worshiping God. Hallelujah for the Lord God. Oh, mini potent training. Now you are believing God. Is that the guy for your life or is he not the guy for your life? You cannot now begin to say, one show bad. Because now you need deep instructions. So you have to stay in that worship. Stay in that place that works for you. That's your secret. Every man has a secret. David's own was worship. David was a worshiper. Whenever he worships, things happen. He worshiped. He prays. Jehoshaphat understood that in praise also things happen for him. Get what works for you. Elijah, on the other hand, was a man of prayer. He knows when he prays, ah, Yanumasti Shele. He knows how to bring God down in the place of prayer. Are you listening to me? That, that's fantastic. That works for them. And Elijah's son, Elisha, you will not find so much prayer in Elijah's life, but you understood the prophetic. He understood that dimension. That was what works for him. No time. He got angry. They call him a party. Bad head, bad head, bad head. The guy just said, oh yeah, come, consume them. And the guy started working. Oh, professor, oh, he has said it and he started working. Elisha, dynamic man. Raise the dead, just say it and he goes. He understood what works for him. Faith works for him. If faith works for you, you see, faith is what works for you and what you really believe and be, are persuaded in. That's the substance of your own faith. It's what your own faith is built on. Don't say somebody just said it and that said to say and it walks away. And then you are doing the same thing and you are not seeing results. That's the reason many believers don't see results. Do you get that? Do you, should I explain that again? Beautiful. Know what works for you. Look at your name and say know what works for you. Another one, spend time with him. Listen, nothing works except in time. Communion will take time. Intimacy will take time. Don't let anybody deceive you that you can be as close to God as you ought to be while you are doing devotional in the morning. Would you not challenge yourself a generation that keeps reading devotionals? Will you not challenge yourself? I go to 311 and I say, I cannot run on this thing anymore. This is, this is nonsense. So what am I reading? Was there anything wrong in devotion? No. But it's not enough. Ten seconds, ten, five minutes. Five minutes. And then I say, Mama, Abba. Abba, mana. I'm bigger than that. My destiny is greater than that. You can, I'm not saying don't do devotionals, but they are supposed to be what is called addendums. If at all you will. 
If at all you will, you should know. You know and then I'm doing devotion now. I'm doing devotion. And I say, Have you read the Bible? Say, yes, yes, I did devotion now. Some you did for 12 minutes. Are you a serious Christian? Some people want to climb the bike and say, Father, thank you for today. You walk and you took your bath. And you are praying on the road. That's as close as you, to, you want to be. But that's not as close as God demands of you. It will cost time. It will take time. Am I, what am I saying? I'm saying that, you see, there are foundations in spirituality. Many times we don't build these foundations. We just begin to build the things that are supposed to be on it. How do you not have land and you are building house? Hey, makatu, akatu, eketu, akatu, eketu, akatu, eketu. Stop that eketu and leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Fix certain areas of your life. Fill the foundation and then you will see results. Many people get disoriented about the church. Get disoriented about God. Why? Because they are not fixing the basics. When you don't get the basis right, you will not get many things right. If you desire to have intimacy with God, you must listen very closely to what I'm about to share with you. I believe we do not know what to do concerning a thing, how to respond, or what our attitude should be until we read this in scriptures. The scripture must tell you what to do. Scriptural perspective should be the telling thing in your life. Biblical truth should be what you run with. Until I know what God's word says about a matter, I don't move. I don't even have an opinion. Someone was calling me, say, what's your opinion about tattoo? I said, I don't know yet. Until I find out what the scripture says, I'll tell you what I know. I have to know. I don't want my opinion. I want what the word of the Lord says. I want to tell you what the word of the Lord says about the foundation of intimacy. You will not get into intimacy with God if you do not understand the principles I'm about to share with you. Listen, everything worthwhile spiritually comes from his presence. Anything worthwhile spiritually comes from his presence. The more of God you access, the more you gain, the more access you gain into spiritual realities. The more of God you access, the more access you gain into spiritual realities. When you get into more of God, there are dimensions of God. I think I've shared that with you before, that there are dimensions of God. Somebody said, God is Jehovah Nisi. God, my banner. You don't argue. That's what it is to him. Oh, I didn't share. I think I did that in Bible school. I said, that's what it is to him. If somebody says God is only Drew, you can't argue with that. He's telling you his dimension that he has seen. If you have not seen God as that kind of guarantor, then keep quiet. People name God in the whole testament according to their experience. How do we know that his name is Jehovah Jireh? Because he provided for Abraham. And Abraham said Jehovah Jireh. Every name of God comes from a practical experience, except the one he told us that that's his name. And that will be about two in scriptures. I am that I am. That's what he told himself he is. When the Lord heals, he said, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth. You call God by your experience, by the dimensions you see. If I tell you that my God is the God that does all things, you can argue with it and die. It's your problem. What I have seen, I have named him by what I see. Are you listening to me? Let me go back to spiritual realities. Sometimes you don't give people addendum. You just give them addendum. You don't pay for that one. All right. No one has ever become great with God without a deep personal work with him. Can I say that to you again? No one has ever become great with God without a deep personal work with him. I'm telling you spiritual realities and truth here tonight. No one. Give me one name of a general you know. They don't happen by mistake. It doesn't happen by mistake. No one ever goes on and become great based on the revelation of their fathers or their pastors. They become great with God based on a deep personal walk with him. Until you have a personal walk with God. Until Jesus becomes a revelational truth to you. Until Jesus becomes a person. Until the gospel becomes a reality in your heart. Until God becomes a full reality in your body and your spirit, uh, there are realities you will never walk in. You can become great. You can look at Reverend George, uh, you can look at David O'Reilly, you can look at all of those people and say, wow, hello, hello, the wow and the wowness of your wow must be because they know God. Greatness is in the knowledge of God. Roosevelt, one of the richest guys that has ever lived on the surface of the earth. Had so much money, he was sick, nigh unto death. They told him he's going to die. He decided to give 90% of his money away. And health came back to him. Health came back to him. Health came back to him. How? 
he discovered that by giving, you can get life. If you tell that guy that there is not a God, you are wasting your time. Or giving does not pay. You know when we argue about things, because we have not experienced it. It's because you have not experienced it. He knows that giving pays because he's living because of, he gave. Now let me go back to Hebrews chapter 10 and I want to begin to give you principles from that verse. Many people use that verse. The only chapter, you've only verse you know in Hebrews 10 is 38. Surely he that will come, will come. Hey, though he tarries, wait for him. When you need more man, you're just going to say wait for him. Though he tarry, wait for him. Do it, tarry, wait for him. Do it, tarry, wait for him. Oh, he tarry, wait for him. He's coming. He says, yeah, we'll come, we'll come. He's coming. Hallelujah, he's coming. Makata, basha. Stop that nonsense. There's deeper things in that verse and in those verses than husband. Look at your neighbor and say, there's deeper things. There are deeper things than husband in that verse of scripture. <laughs> All right, Hebrews 10. All right, let's continue here. Hebrews 10, 19-31 gives us a New Testament look into laying foundations of intimacy in our lives. And what are the foundations? Number one, it's what I call the access card to God is the body of Christ. The access card. You know when you want to go to a building, if you go to an hotel, hotel room, um, just leave that scripture on the screen, you go to an hotel room, what you find is they give you a card that helps you access that room. Is that, do you understand that? So you put that card on the door and then you open it and the door opens. That's the access card. The access card into deeper things with God is the body of Christ. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Next verse. By a new and living way. That means there was an old way. Are you someone listening to me? Now there is a new and living way which he consecrated for us. Through the veil that is his flesh. In Old Testament times, when people want to go into the Holy of Holies, there was a veil that separates. Scripture is saying that the veil this day is the body of Christ. Therefore, you have to go through that veil. You have to go to the body of Christ in order to get to where God is. What is his body? His body was crucified for you. His body was a very atonement for you. Believing in what that body purchased on the cross is what you need to access God. Can I say that to you again? Believing in what the body of Christ represents is what you need to access God. Believing and having a high priest over the house of God. Believing in what that body did. Say, a body has he prepared for me. That's what he says. Hebrews chapter 10 and then verse 7 to 9. He say, a body as he prepared for me. God knows, Jesus knows that this is the body. When I give this body on the cross, access is going to be granted for people to have intimacy with God. He therefore suggests you that intimacy with God was not possible, was not possible in old times. It's only possible and possible even now. By that, we, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. If you are going to have access to God and intimacy with God, you must honor Christ. Can I say that to you again? You must honor him. You must serve him. You must respect him. You cannot be using the name or using his person because we are in a generation that just trivializes everything. Where everything is just on social media and on phone. You cannot trivialize the body. The very essence of your salvation. The very essence of the gospel. The very essence of what we stand on. You cannot afford to trivialize it. Someone listening to me. I need you to stop laughing at jokes about Christ and his body. I need you to stop laughing at the stupidity behind those jokes. I need you to stop laughing at anything that demeans even the body of Jesus. Because a body did he prepare for him. Silver and gold he didn't take from him. But a body he prepared. And on that cross, that body became a living way for you. It is impossible for two veils to exist simultaneously. And therefore, because the body of Christ became a veil through which we can enter in, the first veil needs to be cut from heaven down. Immediately he died. Why? Because now you cannot enter through that veil anymore to the Father. It's now him who has made the way. When we say he made the way, we are saying his body became why we can enter him. His body became the very substance by which we can move. His body became the very reason by which we can have access even to him. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. The body of Jesus. 
Number two, and, and you see when, therefore it tells you that you are going to access God. You are going to access God not based on who you be, but based on who Christ is. You are a fearful person. You have been saying God should forgive you for the last 10 years. You know what you did. It is not what you did or what you didn't do that grants you access. It is what Jesus did. It is taking this far that people get to what is called Osas. Once saved, forever saved. But don't let me get here tonight. Number two, honor Christ. He is the high priest over his house. We are priests, but he is the high priest. When you understand these simple principles, you understand your position in spiritual hierarchy, that you are a priest, Jesus is the high priest. There is a difference between a priest and a high priest. One of the basic difference between them is that the high priest alone wears the urim and the tumim, which is called the light and the guide. It is that urim and tumim that helps Israel in making decisions. And therefore, every time decision has to be made, they go to the high priest. And so the high priest used the Urim and Tumim to know what God is saying, to know the will of God. Right now, you cannot know the will of God. Therefore, we have to go to the high priest over his house, Jesus. Therefore, your pastor does not really know many things like you think he does. He only access the Urim, the owner of the Urim and Tumim more than you did. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You also can access him. And what a high priest we have. Listen to this. Somebody said, you know what, I messed up yesterday. I said, cry, by all means repent and confess, but go back to your father. He said, why? I said, have you read your Bible? Can I very quickly, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Can we begin to read from verse 16? Hebrews chapter 4. No, no, no. Not, from, not verse 16. Can we go to verse 14? 14. Seeing then that we have what? Great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. Verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize. <laughs> sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all point tempted as we are, yet without sin. Thank God Jesus came to the earth. Thank God Jesus knew what it means to be hungry. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Thank God Jesus saw those little, those beautiful, beautiful girls in Jerusalem. He saw them. He saw them. He can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. Although he was without sin, but he knows what it means. He has wear this cloth before. The cloth of humanity. He knows what it means to be a man. And therefore, when you fail, you can go back to him. You see, often this understanding gives you certain things. It gives you a persuasion whenever you go to God. That the high priest over this house, the high priest over this house is my family member. He's been a man before. I don't know whether you have been looking for something before and then you went to, you entered an office and then you discovered that that person is your church member. How do you feel? Ah, this thing, oh sure, today. Alone, <laughs> Orioki. You know what Shelley? This was happened. Why? Because you had an affinity with that person. You know there is a communion. We, we share certain things. Listen, you and Jesus share certain things. One of it was that his hair grew, grew as a child. One of it is that he grew like a child. One of it is that he was hungry. He did the work, he was tired, he slept. Are you listening to me? In the midst of the storm, he slept. You can also sleep in prayer. <laughs> but don't continue to sleep in prayers. He understands. It was Mas Lucado that says, when you pray and you sleep off, don't, don't worry, you only slept in the hands of your father. But ensure you don't continually sleep in the hands of your father every time. <laughs> because when a man is supposed to grow up from being a child, imagine Leke now sleeping in the hands of his father. You know that in community shell any, that he's not supposed to be sleeping in the hands of his father anymore. Why he's supposed to have grown? As a child, you can't do that, but you are supposed to grow spiritually. Number three, you need to come with confidence. Listen to this. The spiritual world works with a lot of boldness and confidence. The moment you start decreeing and declaring, the devil will come and tell you you are saying nonsense. It is your level of conviction that gets results in the spiritual realm. Is someone listening to me? The Bible says, let us all now come with confidence, with persuasion. Anytime I pray, 
I don't care whether it's two seconds. I am persuaded. I have so much confidence that I'm in the throne room. Whether my hair is long or short, however you look does not matter. Listen, are you with me? Anytime I, you have to have that persuasion. This is the key to intimacy. Many people don't pray because they think they are too dirty for God to listen to them. I tell people, when you mess up, where should you go? You should go to the place where they will clean you up. It's only God that can clean you up, not guilt. Run to God. The devil tells you and the voice of your flesh tells you run away from God. But where you are supposed to go is to run to God because he alone can save and clean you. Go with confidence. Don't say, you, 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 you see people like you that are praying. That- Tell the thing, I'll keep praying until you get out. I will keep praying until you get out. I will keep praying. Listen to this. Recently, I did something, and then the Holy Spirit was telling me, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. I said, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he kept coming. I said, God, I'm sorry. Say, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then he kept coming back. He got to the time. I said, no, this is not God anymore. This one has become a kiss of the brethren. I said, devil, leave me alone now. He said, come on. Because I said sorry to God. Leave me alone. I'm not doing business with you. I'm doing business with God. It's that persuasion you must have. Is someone listening to me? Every time you approach God, you must come with confidence that it was God that said you should come. Anytime I teach this, I tell people, Scripture says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, He said, come, let us reason together. Who said you should come? He said, let us reason together. He said, Jabrin, let us reason. I want to know how you are thinking. Let us, let us reason together. Come. Verse 16, Hebrews. He said, come boldly. Who said you should come again? God. Hebrews chapter 10. He said, let us draw near to him. I can't, you see, if, if I give you, I tell you, Ebo calls now, I say, hello, Ebo Alpha. Okay, come and see me in the house. When you knock the gate, and my gate man, don't worry, just let me speak the way I want to speak. You understand? <laughs> and my gate man looks at the camera and says, who is that? And speaks to you over the megaphone and you hear it. And say, ah, it's Ebo. He said, what, what are you looking for? Will you be intimidated? Why? Because I said you should come. Very simple. God says come, a stupid demon is telling you you cannot go closer. Irritating. Just like my security man cannot be telling you you cannot see me. Irritating. Somebody says, ah, Asorok sent you an invitation letter and say, Bubu says you should come. And then you go. And then some, some guy is telling you you cannot enter. You will not be laughing. I say, do you love your job? I know things you will be saying. Do you love your job? Do you love your job? Who put you here? Do you know who I am? Do you know who said I should come here? Who is your guy? Who is your boss? Who do you report to? Who is your supervisor? Why? Because God said you should come. Listen, spiritual growth happens. Intimacy happens because of confidence and deep persuasion in who God is. And what God has said. He said, come. If he said, come, ah, come, it's come. You see, I don't understand our Greek word, come. Come is come. It does not need Greek, Latin of come. He said, come, I should come. If I say, come, you will come. You know what I'm saying about my shady day? How will I come? At the gate called beautiful, Peter said, arise. The man was not saying, how should I arise? In fact, they didn't give him that chance. They just took him up. If God says, come, then you should come. Look at your neighbor and say, come to God. You can see that he deserves, he wants us to be with him. Number four now. Now I want to get to some deep intricacies now. Why it seems like you and I don't get answers. And why it seems that this is where we all miss the road. Alright? We all go boldly. We all do certain things. But why is it that we do not get into intimacy because of a lack of a sincere heart? A sincere heart. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. Can I have that very quickly? Hebrews 10 22. For it is not possible. Ah. Bible says, let us draw near with a true, what is that? A true art. That translation says, a sincere art. Please, why are you looking for God? Your heart. Why are you looking for God? Why do you pray three hours a day? You know, sometimes when I pray that kind of prayer, I tell myself, kill him, Because you, when you ask yourself, you will discover that there is a problem somewhere. Some people are praying and seeking God because they want people to know that they are anointed when they are preaching. A true heart. God is more interested in the state of your heart than in him listening to your prayers. The purity of your heart is, more, is important to God. 
Your heart is key in advancing in intimacy with God. Your heart is key. When you see God anoint a man, go and check it out. Even you, you are amazed at their heart. If there is something, I tell people now that you, there's somebody they cannot abuse, and you can't be Apostle Sema anywhere, you can't abuse him. If you try it on social media, they will cancel you. I don't care what it says, they will cancel you. You know what it means to be canceled on social media? You almost lock your account because they will, the kind of abuse and cause. I tell people, if you can abuse some generals in the faith these days, but my master, master said, don't do I'm advising you, don't, they will cancel you. Why do you think people will do that? People will tell you he's a very humble person. He has a good heart. He, let me say this to you. If you can find a man of God whose heart you are questioning and is a general of God, then I begin to say maybe he didn't find the power with God. Maybe he didn't find the power with God. WF Kumui. If some of you are WF Kumui, it might misbehave. The kind of... The kind of Cash and Torah that will go before you. You will be on your seventh plane now. I tell people, they said Oedepo is rich. I said, have you, have you ever seen Baba Oedepo snap himself inside any of those planes before? And he said, he has seven. Where are they? Where are they? I, I have sincere question. If it was you, Japa, just the way you are, said the world must know. I can't yard me well. Look at you. He cannot, that's why he cannot give you so much because he cannot trust your heart. Many people have gone to prayers, deep things with God, 14 days prayer. They are practicing everything they are learning in this ministry. People are preaching everywhere and they are finding no result because of their heart. Their heart. God is not moved by the vocal, by, by, by the loudness of your tongues. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Forget it, calm down. God is looking at your heart. God is looking at your heart. Matthew 22 verse 37. Let me give you some scriptures for what I said. Matthew 22 verse 37. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Did he say with all your cares? Did he say that? With all your needs? Did he say that? Loving God. Just loving his kingdom. Loving the gospel. It's what matters to God. For Samuel 16, 7. Oh, Samuel said, the Lord anointed it for me. Oh, God said, that one, stop it. If it's please, stop it. Yeah, I don't look at the things you look at. You look at the outward. I, the Lord, look at the heart. The Lord is interested on the heart. The Lord is interested on the inside. He's not interested on the physical, see? In the genetics, in how much you stay in church, how much it seems you pray, how much it seems people say, Mama Jesu, Mama Jerusalem, Mama Gio, all those names. He's not interested. He's only interested in your heart. Little wonders, the psalmist had this understanding. He says, renew. He says, renew. Create in me a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within me. Right spirit. Right spirit. If they don't call you, you are not in front, you will not do. It has to be all about you. <laughs> Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. I love Jeremiah 17 verse 10. Can we see Jeremiah 17 10? I want you to read it yourself. He you said, I the Lord. What does he do? What does he do again after that? That is serious. I felt it would have been okay for him to just search the earth. He said he search the earth and test the mind. No instrument in this world can test the mind. No, none. They have not done it. Heart rate can be tested. None, none can test the mind. But God says, I do. I have. I have the, I have the mind meter. Mindometer. I, I test the mind. I have the mindometer. He says, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Can you see now why there is difference in results even when we do the same thing? Can you see it? Yeah, I had one fellowship new. We were both called of God. Though. Look at him. Reverend George, shut up. Oh, look at us. Can you see that now? The heart. The heart. The heart. Tell your neighbor, say the heart. I'm not, I'm not going to stop on this matter of the heart. Let me continue again. Number five, a heart continually cleansed by the word of God. How can I get, what are the foundations of intimacy? A heart continually cleansed by the word of God. By the word of God. Let me move faster here. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22. Can I have Hebrews 10 22? A heart continually cleansed by the word of God. He said, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed 
with pure water. And I told you that's not heritage water, right? I told you those are not learning waters. That's the cleansing of water, washing of water by the word. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians 5, 26. Listen to this. Don't stop working on your heart. Listen, Ephesians 5, 26, that it might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Every time you read the word, it's purifying you. Every time. You see, people say, I, I need a heart cleanser. I say, what you need is a dig deeper into the word of God. A continual deep in the word of God. A woman, after the makeup by Philo, they make you up. And then you look like something else. You know you are ugly, but you now see the work of a man. He has made you very fine. You dare not sleep like that. If you sleep like that, after one week, the pores on your face will be big like this. What happened? Because the face cannot breathe. What you will do is that you cleanse the face every night. Listen to this. Because of the kind of world we live in, because of the contaminations in the world, it's important that you cleanse your heart daily with the word of God. Because if everything you see, you are just checking your email, pop, pornography pop up. You are not looking for it. They just saw an uncladded woman. Just see. It wasn't you looking. You are just checking Yahoo and then you saw that one. We live in a difficult world. You are just minding your own business. And then you went to the market and you saw this lady whose shirt, whose gown, and whose crop up top is so, is so down that it reaches the navel. It was not your fault. She, her, 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 her skirt was so down to the tiles. It wasn't you. And then she was yellow. And then you were magnified. You were magnified. You were electrified. You saw it. And then you begin to think, oh my God, when we got this is beautiful. God did something beautiful. This is 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 beautiful. Now, the, the art has already been affected. What do you do? You return to the cleanser of the word. Someone say, but I can quote all the scriptures. Why do I still have to read the word of God? The cleanser of the word. It's the cleansing agent that you need. Your heart will not be able to get into deep intimacies with God except you clean the heart. Someone has left. Are you still here? Are you still here? Look at your name and say, clean your heart. Oh, I don't care what translation of the Bible you are reading. Just be cleansing your heart. Be cleansing your heart. Oh, somebody said my heart was better two years ago. Now nah, I don't even understand the kind of envy, the kind of hatred, the kind of evil. That's in my heart. It's because you are far from the world. The closer you are to the world, the better your heart is. It's the cleansing work of the word of God. The cleansing agent of the word of God. Number six, how can I go into intimacy? I'll give you three more and then we'll go. How do I go into intimacy? I encourage others to love God and live for him. You need to encourage others to love God. I've discovered that in the word, the word says when you share it, you lose. So you hold revelation. Yeah, I caught the revelation. I share with you. But I will not share it. You hear it when, when I blow. You hear it when I blow. You won't blow. I'm telling you, it's not because you won't blow. I have revelation. If I share with you, but deep things, deep mysteries, I'm telling you, you will not blow. I'm sorry, you will not blow. Because in the spiritual, it is not the carnal world. In the carnal world, you are writing a project and then you have discovered an information. And then you want to keep it so that your friend will not give your lecturer that same information. Or so that he will not use it when he's doing presentation for that project. You are not using it because you believe that is your secret. That is that thing that will make you different. You hold it. In the spiritual more revelations come by giving, not by hoarding. Deeper things of God comes by sharing, not by hoarding. You know a little, you share. You know a little, you give. And that's what happens when believers come together. Hebrews 10, 24, he said, do not forsake the assembly together. Why? Because iron sharpens iron in the presence of God. Intimacy comes. Because knowledge is what is the bedrock of intimacy. And when we come together, we share like that, we grow together. Is someone listening to me? You should have friends you talk Bible with. You share with. Forsaking of assembly together. It doesn't mean we have to gather in the name of a church. You just come in and say, ah, guy, I remember those days. I had some guys we used to share the word together. Call it believers. I think Judah mentioned it when he came here. PJ mentioned it. He met us at the end of it. 
Listen, boys will come and say, I saw something in Ephesians chapter 2. And then they come and they break it down. Say, eh, eh. You know, you, they have thought that me and this very, I know the Bible, God, I will just keep quiet. I know that. <laughs> you see, there are things that even pastors are hearing for the first time in the mouth of a lady. But who say, hey, revelation, so you will not die before your time. That's how you work like this. For a pastor, I share something with pastor. Pastor almost died. I'm telling you. Pastor almost died. Oh, he almost died. He almost died. You, you, so when they were hearing for the hmm. It's, we are hearing for the first time. It's a revelation to rocks. That's what happens. Intimacy with God comes by what you share. Whatever, what is passionate to you is what you share with people. And the more God can trust you, the more he opens himself up to you. Another thing, I say encourage others to love God and live for him. You have to do that. And then number seven, be passionate about the gathering of believers. When people come together, understand that there's an anointing in collectivity. Be, be, be very, uh, uh, I don't go to any church again, I just serve my God. That is prevalent in this generation. A generation of hurting people. People who are babies mentally. You know, you can be a spiritual giant and be a mental baby. You have to grow all of it for you to be a proper man. Your pastor say, get out. Because of that, you are, you are changing church. You can share. Listen, there are things, deeper things. Deeper things. They will say worse, but you aren't going anywhere. I told you about the man that told the evangelist, Allah, we, we are the owner of this church together. You can't send me. Even if you say I should go, I can't go. It's God's church. It's our church. We build it together. Even if it's one area I drop, it's our church. We can't go anywhere. You can go before us because you know you are a holder, but we will not leave this place for you. It's our church. I'm not saying he was talking to me about Reverend George. He told Reverend George himself like this. Hey, they let me mean. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> we must understand that Jesus is in the midst of his people. We mu- they gathered at the upper room. Bible says, not, not the up- before Pentecost. Bible says, and Jesus walked in. He was amongst them. Do you think he was amongst them because they are watching football? He was sharing things of the kingdom. You can gather two persons and begin to share the things of the kingdom. That's how intimacy with God comes. He drops something in your heart. I tell people, make sure you tell yourself, I will put something about God on my status. As you are typing the thing, you will see that revelation will be coming. The thing you ah, I am You get what I'm saying? It has happened to you before. Aha. You say, ah, hey, I must copy this thing. You screen grab it. Because for you also, it's a revelation. People are now telling you, ah, oh, man of God, you are deep. Oh, you say. <laughs> it's God that's deep in us. What's going on? Because the more you engage the spiritual love wanting to be a blessing, the more God gives to you. It's not that you, have you discovered you want to show people that you are very spiritual? And then you want to type, you just stop. I took pare, I took stop, I took pare. Why? Because God is not involved in flesh showing forth. He will not help your carnality to grow. He's only interested in blessing his people. Edification. That's how many people grow. They grow like whoa, and then they stop growing. And you wonder, ah, ah, this kingdom race is not like. That's why some of us we just go one step at a time, but we are very consistent, very consistent. We don't know much, or we just be going small, small. We don't know much, we go small, small, small. We don't know, it's going small, small. Somebody say, ah, there's anointing. I say, man, be no, there, there, I take one year, two percent. I take one year, one percent. I take one year, two percent. One year, I take three percent. One year, four percent. By consistency, this is growing. But you, you want God to give you 100%. You want to raise the dead. You, are, you got born again last month. You want to raise the dead this month. Because you had a dowser. Be passionate about the garden of believers. Number eight, live a holy life. Abstain from sin. Do not insult the spirit of grace. Hebrews chapter 10, 29 to 31. It's clear. Don't insult the spirit of grace. Say, ah, we're living in time of grace. One idiot who was wearing, who was wearing uh, this thing they put tie on and then call it tie, call himself a pastor, was preaching and saying, we have sex, it's not a sin. And, and, listen, even if God is forgiving you, is that not an insult on the spirit of grace? You see, some people will not grow. Why? Because their heart is troublesome. Their heart is dysfunctional. Are you listening to me? 
Even if I know that if my child touch something, he's not going to die. Will I not be preaching that you keep touching it? It will destroy the person. It will destroy the person. I don't understand why you will carry camera and do speaker and microphone and be preaching that kind of a thing. Is that a revelation? Was that to build us up or to make us all mad so that we can follow the Nicolaitan doctrine and just be sleeping around? If you have not seen that video, don't go and watch because I said it. It's, you don't need it. You will gain nothing from it. Absolutely nothing from it. It's just a complete waste of 30 minutes of your life. And I think you have better things to do with your life. Amen. All right. So what did I say you should do? Live a holy life. God is a holy God. Don't let anybody deceive you. God is a holy God. He is so holy he cannot behold iniquity. Scripture says it's your iniquity that has separated you from him. Are you listening to me? Our God is holy. Righteousness. A man saw God and said, woe to me, I'm undone. I live in the midst of unclean people. It was because he saw the holiness and the magnificence of grace and God. He said, I can't do this. I can't. I can't, I can't stay here anymore. Why? Because his presence. You see, you, if you catch, ever catch a glimpse of God, there are things people say that you all laugh and you'll be very angry. You have to live a holy life. You can't kiss today and come back tomorrow. Meyala, elegala, meelaya, elegaya. And you're saying you're doing devotional. You first of all go on your knees. You repent in sackcloth and ashes. You confess your sin. And you will not go there again. Because there is no other sacrifice. Let's read that verse. Hebrews chapter 10. Give me 29 to 31. Don't worry, I'll release you now. The Bible says, of how much worse punishment do you suppose? Now, let's go to 28. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. That means, um, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not. You do it once. You don't have to do it repeatedly. They judge you immediately. Testimony of two or three witnesses. Judge you immediately. A woman was caught in the very act of adultery. A woman who slept herself alone. Do you understand that in scriptures? A woman alone, slept with herself alone, did adultery by herself. And they took her. And they were going to stone her. Why did I say that? Because the man was not found. Do you understand? The man, it's not adultery for the man. Okay, so they stone her. They were going to stone her and kill her. That's the judgment, without mercy. You understand? Now you understand the law of Moses, right? Law of Moses is very terrible law. Because it's mercy. Law of Moses. We, because we are the one doing the judgment, not God. You see, this God, we are waiting for God to judgment. That is delaying things. It's delaying. You entered my house and carried things and carried my phone and we caught you. No time. Who was in the house with me? My wife. Two testimonies. He's a thief. He's a thief. Slash the hand. That's the end. I will begin to go. You see, all this is Makale, Lepa, Oluadajo. Let God judge. Let God judge. Waste of time. In the time of Moses, they do it themselves. <laughs> oh, this one, I think he slept with my wife. If you even think that somebody is sleeping with your wife, just think at all. Just think. Imagine. They call it, there is a crime. They say it's a kind of jealousy. You just take a sacrifice of jealousy. You give it to the priest. One back, oh, they will put concussion for him. They will give the lady a concussion, an assortment. They will take off of the coal and the things on the altar, mix it with oil, mix it and give her. The thing looks like juju. Give it to her. They said, if she has slept with another person, her stomach would just begin to swear. It's in your Bible. If she hasn't, she'll begin to go. Do you understand the law of Moses now? <laughs> now let's now go to 29. He said, anyone who has rejected, and now say, of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be taught worthy? Let's just think about it. Which one will be more worthy? What kind of punishment? Who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Can't tell the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. Verse 13. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. Somebody say, God cannot, God cannot take vengeance. Jesus is so loving. Do you think he was easy to die on the cross? If he was you that go to the cross, will you not say, I gave you option for <laughs> Fair, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge. What does that verse say? The Lord will judge the world. Is that what it says? His people, his very own guys, including you and me. 
It's not a joking God. When the trumpet sounds like this, we have stopped playing. It's judgment. How is it that our generation believe in vampires and believe in um, Halloween and they don't believe in the Holy Spirit? How is it that our generation believe in demons and they don't believe in angels? How? How is it that you believe there is heaven and you don't believe there is hell? There is hell. Uh, verse 31. Look at that. I, I said there is hell. He said it is a fearful thing. When I read things like that, I, I like to magnify it to myself. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you fall into my hands, PFM can come and beg. If you fall into the hands of God, who will beg for you? Verse 32. Leave it alone. Finally. Engage always the Holy Spirit in prayers. Intimacy grows by knowledge. And this is the only one where I will go to Ephesians to find scriptures for what I'm saying. Ephesians chapter 1, 16 to 17. The Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation. You need to engage the Spirit of God to enlighten you. The Bible says, enlighten my darkness so that I don't sleep the sleep of death. Oh, you are going to say the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation. We enlighten your eyes. Listen to this. There is more in God. And you can get into greater intimacy. You can get into more. But you will not. And it is not a cause. Except you leave the foundations well. Except the building blocks are laid well. People cut, short circuit their growth because they enter into sin. People short circuit their growth because they have evil hearts. People short circuit their growth because they are not pursuing God. They are pursuing a job. And when that job comes, what's the need of a God? Let me say this, and I tell these people this. If God is an... What relationship do you have with your ATM card? Talk to me. What relationship do you have with your ATM card? Where is your ATM card? Many of you don't know because you don't need it. Really? You don't need it now. It is when you need it that you go and look for it. Or you go and take it from that purpose. And then you don't go to an ATM machine and start hugging it. You don't love the ATM machine. Just give me one and let me go. You don't... The relationship you have is card... To, to machine, to my money, and I go. We have turned God to an ATM God. We only go to God because we have a need. We have a withdrawal to make in the court of heaven. And so you see people dying there. We move. We say, Kinnikan, amen. Kinnikan, and then you are done. And you have done that with God four times. And it's this mercy he keeps answering you. Or you want to keep going like that and you think you will grow. It's not going to work. You need to see God for who he is. You need to worship him because of who he is. You need to pursue art after him because you love him with your heart. This is the finance fire that we pursue after him. That we seek him for who he is. That the fire of God's presence is all that we pursue. That the fire of God's presence is all that matters to us. No, because when you pray in tongues for 20 hours, your hand will begin to shake. And wherever you lay your hands, someone will fall down and die. That's not why you are doing this. I'm chasing after God. Because it's the right thing to do. I don't know whether that helped anybody here. I don't know whether that blessed anybody here. If you are saying, you know, from today I'm going to have intimacy with God. I'm going to just lay these foundations. You know, I did not emphasize on reading the word. I did not emphasize on prayers. I did not emphasize. Because all of those things are the things we build on a land. Believers have not bought land. They are building houses. That house must only be in their head. It can't be real. It can't be real. That's why when the wind comes, just blow the thing off. Because you are just sharing in somebody's land. It's not, you don't have convictions. You don't understand the laws that guide these things. And that's why things are working the way they are. It's time to go. Tell your neighbor it's time to grow. It's time to put foundations in place. I know some of you are not laughing because I really spoke to some of you because you have been using God and you know. And I'm not apologetic about it. It's what God says, I should say, as they have said. Stop using my father. Understand that. Don't, don't go and run after him because you have short price. Or because of uh, baby Oku. Sorry. Those are, you should, people should not be taking that confidence. Don't be chasing him because of wines, drinks, phone, crews, jobs. Unbelievers have those things. You don't need God to have some of those things. You just need to obey spiritual principles. As financial principles, you have money. Do you understand that? So don't stop seeking God for 
things. Scripture says he made known his ways to Moses, his act to the children of Israel. Is God's act not good? Fantastic. I like power. I, not like, I like power. I like power. I do like it. Hallelujah. And I say, what you should I like power, but I have never thought for God because he should anoint me with power. I don't want that kind of power. I want the power that comes naturally because I stay in his presence. There is something that comes naturally because you stay in God's presence. When the soap stays close to the sponge, the sponge also has the capacity of the soap. Why? Because it stays close to it. That's why God said, draw nearer to me. So that you can have the capacity of God just by staying close to him. Just by staying close in his presence. Just that by being with him, you just become like him. You begin to express goodness. You will begin to express kindness. And people begin to say, you have changed. Oh, something has happened to you. It's not you. It's that intimacy. You are becoming like God because you stayed with God. Is someone listening? You are becoming more like him because you stayed with him. Will you stay with God? Will you love him for who he is? There are songs you people sing that you need to change. I don't understand why you will sing, sing fire, 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 two, four, seven for 18 days. What is wrong with you? Can't you sing about God's love? Can't you sing about who he is? Can't you sing about his awesomeness? Can't you sing about his goodness? I can sing some of those songs to you, but I don't want you to look like I'm abusing anybody or any of those singers. But fantastic you, you need a God to worship. You need a God to serve. You don't say, set my heart on fire. And then fire. fire. You listen to that 18 hours. And you listen to that for the last one month. That, you keep playing. You keep, if it turns you to fire, what will you do? How come I don't have you? There are things that we ask for that they are not, you don't even need it at your level. What you need is closeness to God. What you need is proximity to God. When you can sense his heart beats. When you know when he's happy. When he's pleasurable. When you know what he's doing. That's intimacy. Intimacy with me is knowing what I love to do. And when I'm happy and I'm not. There are people when they say they want to see me. When they see my face, they say maybe you can part our Because my face. If you do anything, you are going to hear you know. So it's better to just walk away. So they walk. I say, I'll come back and see you, sir. <laughs> Why, how do they know? Intimacy. So people will still see me like that. Even worse than that. They say, ah, sir, this girl, is God told me. God told, I just say, and then I begin to find my level. I won't even say anything. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You must know how God feels about everything. Someone says, should I pray to go to a club? You don't have to pray. If you are intimate with him, you will know what he says. Is somebody that, is that your husband? I did not pray so much to know that that's my wife because there was intimacy. I knew what God was saying per second. Now, per second billing with God. You can't go on a 10 minutes billing, a monthly billing like you are doing. You call him once in a month. You hear him for me. God gave me the last instruction in the month of June. I remember it. Yes, something wrong with you. You need to have instruction daily. Daily as I live. How often as I breathe. Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. As I was coming here, he said something. As I, if I will go out now, he will still say something. I, because I'm also saying something. It's koinonia. It's intimacy. It was Jesus had in mind when he said pray without season. It means continue in fellowship with me forever. Continue in fellowship with me forever. Some of you will stop coming to church if I drop 20 million in your account today. Why? Because all your problem is solved. You just stay at home. Why? Because money is your problem. I've been issue. It was not God. You were just looking for money. And for your ends to meet each other. Make ends meet. That's what you are looking for, not God. But if you are really looking for God, pursuing God, Nothing will satisfy but him. And there's no hand in him. Until you get into the fullness of him. That's all that is in him. And you keep chasing. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. I want you to consider what I've said. Consider it in your heart. I want to ask you a question tonight. Are you as close to God as you ought to be?